Joining me now on this is Marek Magorowski, the Polish ambassador to the United States. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us. So first, thank I want to get me. you. I'd like to get you to weigh in on why Poland feels the need right now to send 10,000 of its forces to its border with Belarus. Uh, let me tell you uh, first one thing. I'm so profoundly proud seeing those images of the Abrams tanks rolling on on the streets of Poland's capital ahead of uh, tomorrow's military parade. It's uh, uh, another proof of our steadfast alliance of this uh, extremely strong bond which exists, has always existed actually, uh, between Poland and America. We are, uh, back to your point about our engagement in the border area along the polish Belarusian border, we are uh, committing more troops and more military equipment and we are deploying more units to that um, area because we consider it to be our obligation and our duty not only to defend ourselves but also to protect the external borders of NATO and the uh, European Union in uh, the face of uh, Russia's and Belarus's growing aggressiveness. What signs, aside from what we're seeing publicly, and that is uh, even President Lukashenko irresponsibly suggesting uh, that he, he had to pull back Wagner forces uh, who wanted to go over the border into Poland, what other signs are you seeing that worry you uh, about the current situation there, specifically after that failed mutiny of the Wagner group led by Yevgeny Prigozhin and the increase in the number uh, of Wagner forces we've now seen in Belarus? I do believe that uh, many of our viewers are aware of the fact that Poland is the only country in Europe which borders those three neighbors, Russia, Belarus and Ukraine. So you can only imagine how volatile the geopolitical situation in the region has uh, become recently. So we have to brace ourselves for further provocations, uh, not only in Poland, also in Lithuania and in other Baltic countries. Uh, just a few weeks ago, social platforms in Poland were flooded with fake images of Wagner mercenaries penetrating into Poland and operating on Polish soil. Just this morning, two Wagner operatives were detained by uh, by Polish authorities accused of distributing propaganda materials uh, in Warsaw, among many other uh, cities. So I think that the situation here is uh, uh, becoming uh, really very sensitive from our viewpoint, not only in terms of our political engagement, but also in terms of our uh, military involvement in that area. As we know, do you plan to send 10,000 troops to the Poland's eastern border? And Russia has just announced that it's planning to discuss at least sending Russian troops to its western border, citing Poland, uh, of all reasons, for uh, the, the justification for this. I'd like to hear, uh, have you listen to what uh, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu said uh, about this issue. There are existing risks associated with the militarization of Poland, which has become the main instrument of the United States' anti-Russian policy. Warsaw announced the intention to build, according to the Poles, the most powerful army on the continent. What are the risks that he's talking about, if you have any insight into that? Of course, we'd like to avoid any confrontation. I mean, direct military clash with uh, the Russian Federation. We, want, we don't want to drag NATO into a potential war with Russia, especially today. But we know very well, on the other hand, that uh, the Russian army, for example, has performed so miserably in Ukraine. And no wonder that the Russians are pretty much preoccupied with our efforts to, uh, to reinforce our military capabilities, not only along our uh, borders with Belarus and with uh, the Kaliningrad exclave, but generally uh, we have uh, entered a path of, uh, of uh, maybe not militarization, as Mr. Shoigu has just said, but uh, uh, trying to build uh, one of the strongest armies in Europe, again, because we, Poland has been perceived until recently as a net recipient of security. We are now transitioning to the role of net provider of security also for our, um, our partners in the European Union and uh, NATO. You know, uh, Russian officials, uh, Minister Shoigu uh, uh, being one of them, uh, love to wallow in kooky conspiracy theories. We, ha we have also heard uh, his remarks about our willingness uh, to invade Western Ukraine. Of course, those remarks are as outlandish as it uh, gets, and uh, we have already rebutted many of those allegations on multiple 
occasions. Uh, there is, of course, a kind of uh, rivalry uh, in that part of the world, but I think nobody has any doubts whatsoever who is the aggressor and who is committed profoundly to defend uh, their borders and their security in Central and in Eastern Europe. In a recent interview on CNN, your deputy foreign minister accused both Moscow and, and Minsk of transporting illegal migrants to the Polish border in order to destabilize the region. And that has echoes of what we saw in 2021, before uh, the February 2022 invasion, larger scale invasion of Ukraine by Russia. And that was Poland ac accusing President Lukashenko of manufacturing a migrant crisis of sorts at its border. And as you know, uh, some of your tactics and Poland's response to this drew condemnation from your EU allies and members as well. There is an election coming up in your country in just a few months in October. Is there any reason for your allies once again to be concerned that perhaps this border issue is being politicized? Unfortunately, we can expect uh, both Russia and Belarus uh, to weaponize another migration crisis along uh, that uh, uh, border, orchestrated by Belarus, but uh, quite clearly instigated uh, by the Kremlin. As you know, we have erected a fence along the border in order to prevent another crisis of uh, this kind. And um, again, I can only reiterate that it is our obligation to defend not only Poland, but also the external borders of the uh, European Union. We are dealing with an unpredictable foe. It's absolutely impossible to foresee what will happen in the, in the months to come, but I'm, I'm sure that we have to remain vigilant for uh, this kind of uh, operations, this kind of hybrid attacks and asymmetrical warfare on the part of both the Russian Federation and Belarus. Can we see any uh, similar? Are you expecting to use similar tactics uh, as the ones deployed in 2021, the last time I'm, we discussed this border issue? I've got no doubt whatsoever that uh, both uh, the Lukashenko regime and uh, President Putin would be ready to do anything to uh, intimidate Poland and other NATO uh, countries. This is one of the, of the very few things uh, Russians and Belarusians uh, I'm talking about the ruling elites, of course, not about peoples and nations. This is one of the very few things they excel at, intimidating and instilling fear in Western societies. And uh, that's why we have to brace ourselves for uh, further provocations of this sort. You have, we, as we have noted, uh, Poland has been one of Ukraine's staunchest supporters throughout this war, increasing your own uh, defense budget at, at close to 4 percent at this point and providing Ukraine w with a lot of financial aid as well as military and humanitarian aid as well. I'm curious to get your response to what you're seeing there in Washington play out here in the United States as we enter our own presidential election season, specifically with regards to the Republican Party and some of the statements that we're hearing from the front runner, uh, former President Trump, on his views on the war and future aid to Ukraine that would be in question. But not just that. There is a new CNN poll that found 55 percent of Americans, not just Republicans, but Americans say Congress should not authorize additional funding to support Ukraine. How, yeah. how is that being reacted to in, in Warsaw and other European capitals? Of course, that also affects our diplomatic work uh, on a daily basis here in the United States. We are following those polls as well. And the only thing uh, that I can tell you as a diplomat is that we have been uh, insisting on the necessity of uh, talking constantly with uh, American lawmakers, uh, reaching out to the American public opinion in order to keep vivid the interest in uh, uh, what is going on in Europe on the battlefield, also in terms of our diplomatic efforts in order to uh, help and allow Ukraine uh, to win this war. Ambassador Megarowski, we'll have to have you on to continue this conversation. Um, in the meantime, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.